My name is Andrea Vicari. I'm the Director of Responsible Production Frameworks and Sustainability here at Freeport McMoran, where we're one of the largest copper producers in the world. At Freeport, we produce copper, molybdenum, and gold for global markets. We operate one of the largest copper mines in the world in Papua, Indonesia, as well as several very large scale mines in North and South America. I've spent my career in mining and metals, and have worked primarily in sustainability, environmental, and operations. Last year, I had the pleasure of attending the inaugural Women for Metals event in London, England during LME week. It was an absolute pleasure to do something for women during such a typically male-dominated event. I really enjoyed it, and I'm really glad we're continuing here this year. It's a shame, of course, that we're virtual, but, but I'm so glad we're still able to do this, and in fact, maybe bring in many, many more women than we would have in person in London. Being in a, a woman in mining has been hard but it's been worth it. I've benefited significantly throughout my career from women in leadership positions and sustainability, as well as men in operational and corporate roles. Those people believed in me and they continue to do so. I won't spend this keynote on the reasons why gender equality is so important and the case for it. I think the case for it is very clear and I'm not an expert in it, so I'll leave, I'll leave the diagnosis of it to the experts. What I'm here to do today is to get us all thinking about why is it that women tend to dominate in sustainability roles in, mining and, in the mining and metals industry. Let's start with the statistics. If you look across the mining and metals industry today, you see that women are in about 10 to 20 percent of the roles, sometimes as low as 5 percent, depending on where you are. But if you look at just the sustainability roles in the mining and metals industry, you see the complete opposite, 80% women and 20% men. Why is that? Are we better suited? Are there specific traits that we develop over time, perhaps that we excel in? Or is it something else? Is it that the barriers to progression in the industry in sustainability are lower? Or maybe it's some combination of it all. When I started my career in 1999 with a then boutique sustainability firm, the directors were all men. I learned and grew with them, challenged them regularly, as I'm sure they would tell you, but they never treated me differently. But then again, we were a consulting firm. Our profit and loss statements were not about producing products, they were about delivering value to clients around the world. Then I discovered mining and became a lead on a large mining account and was lucky enough to meet my mentor. One of the first things that impressed me the most about her was her fearlessness. She was not afraid to speak up and say her piece. She was a scientist like me and blazing a now legendary trail in the industry. I ended up going to work for the company a few years later, and she constantly told me, just keep going, you're amazing, it will work out. Sage advice for someone who had just started working for one of the largest mining companies in the world, which was dominated by men. She is very recently retired, but thankfully remains a trailblazer on boards today. So then there I was at this big mining company in a corporate environmental role, which went fine. I honestly didn't think much about gender differences or equality at that stage. My boss was a male and so was his boss, but they were very supportive. Then I started to notice a trend that I was thought of as bossy or too assertive, that perhaps I was threatening and I should tone it down that I must have progressed because of my relationships, not because of hard work or a vision for that work. But still, I continued doing my best, and that was recognized. But I still felt a subtle undercurrent. Eventually, I ended up working at site in an operational role, learning what that was like. I truly enjoyed the role. But what I found was there were so many different challenges than in my corporate roles. Looking like a woman was frowned upon by everyone, not just men. Being a mother was next to impossible with young children. The commute, you know, mines are not typically located in convenient locations. So, you know, you'd have a mother with a baby who would drop off their baby at 5.30 in the morning at a daycare an hour away, drive an hour to work, work your, their work day, then drive back to that, that daycare, get there about 5 or 5.30. That's 12 hours for a baby to be in daycare. That's a very long time. And if any woman needed to pump breast milk on site, they were looked at like they were an alien, which is crazy because it's a very natural part of being a mother or being a parent, providing food for your child. 
Now I have to say, these challenges were not at all unique to that particular mine. Mines are rarely conveniently located, to date have not been typically known to provide daycare, typically don't have nursing rooms, although that's changing, which is great. There are also far more significant challenges at fly-in, fly-out operations, which I won't touch here. I have no experience with that, but I can only imagine the challenges. So as I watched and considered what I, what I saw going around me, I finally needed to make a decision myself. Would I stay there and potentially forsake my chances of having children, or leave to start my, my life with my now husband and take a few years out of site life to have kids? I chose the latter and didn't return to site work. In fact, I went back into sustainability from operations because I could work as a consultant, which offered me far more flexibility. This is not to say that there are not examples of women that have been able to work at site and have small children and be successful. But I promise you that if you had a personal conversation with them one-on-one, -on -one, they would tell you just how difficult it is, how challenging it is you know, for, for their quality of life, the amount of stress that it can bring. And the success stories are not common. They're the exception, and we need to change that. But now, here we are in this virtual 2020 world, one where being physically at work has become a luxury. In many cases, it's not a necessity. And we're seeing that 10 years ago. If you asked somebody if the majority of the workforce around the world, <laughs> including several site roles, could work from home virtually, that a GM of a mine could run a mine from home, they would laugh you out of the room. So now maybe we have this opportunity. Maybe this opportunity is better than ever to try to find ways to balance, not just for women, but for men too that have small children in the workforce or other constraints, other caregiving that they need to do. What I see around me in general is positivity. There are organizations of women around the world. Women, uh, women in mining is one that I really want to mention. I'm a member of the local chapter here in Arizona. And honestly, the network that Women in Mining has created across the world to empower and lift up women and also to include men in the dialogue because without men in the dialogue we're not going to be successful it's fantastic we also have women for metals of course this new platform that that aruba started a year ago while many have recently focused on the negatives of social media i think there are a lot of positives for social media in the mining and metals industry for women what it does is it enables us to connect in ways that we never have been able to, to do before. If you went back 10, 15 years ago, these platforms were just burgeoning and they were really used for personal reasons, not for corporate. Now, or anything else, business development, now LinkedIn has become a great place to support each other and to connect these networks for women in mining, for women for metals or others. You also have high grade media and organizations like that doing these amazing specials on gender equality and really questioning the status quo. Companies, too, are taking the lead on this, and that's great to see, but we can't just have the leaders in the mining industry blazing this trail. We need to have everyone in the mining and metals industry doing it. I'm very proud to be co-chair of the Coppermark Advisory Council. The Coppermark is the first responsible production platform or framework for copper in the industry. One of the requirements of the copper mark at sites for them to be awarded is gender equality. Not necessarily achieving it fully, but really striving to work hard towards getting it. And for that, I'm very proud. I am proud that the company that I work for has committed to the copper mark at every single site we operate that produces copper. And I hope to see many more copper mines join us. So let's come back to the key question of why there are so many women leaders in sustainability. Why have so many cho chosen a similar path to me? Certainly it's not a compromise. I love what I do, so I don't want to make it sound like that. But to be a leader in sustainability, you have to be a, a driver of change. You have to be able to collaborate and you have to build long-term relationships. You need to think very broadly across a multitude of issues and you need to be okay with gray and in some cases, a lot of gray and not a lot of data and make risk-based decisions. Is it possible that our socialization as caregivers, mothers, sets us up perfectly for this type of role as a, drive, as a driver, a collaborator, a risk assessor, and communicator? Or could it be that many women gravitate towards non-operational roles and sustainability is a natural fit, 
because the barriers of traditional operational rules aren't there. We see this similar trend as well in other corporate type roles, finance, HR, communications. Could it just be that the barriers are less? These are questions that I and Women for Metals feel deserve some discussion. So we're very excited to have you here today and I encourage you to stick around and be a part of the discussion in the second half of our special event today. Thank you.